the senior agriculture economist at the World Bank, Dr. Adetunji Oredibe, has de decried the neglect of Nigeria's agricultural sector and increasingly dependent on oil, describing it as a disaster. According to him, if Nigeria had held uh, to its market share in palm oil, cocoa, Grand North, and cotton, the country would be earning at least $10 billion annually from these commodities. Well, the second quarter GDP data released uh, this week shows that the sector slowed from 3.17% in the first quarter to 1.79% in the second quarter. This is in spite of the various interventions by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Well, joining me now to talk about this is an agri-consultant and the founder Agri-Business Nigeria, Mr. African Farmer Mogaji. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Mogaji. Thank you for having me. Now, according to the recent um, MBS GDP report for the second quarter, the agricultural sector recorded a decline in growth from 3.17% in first quarter to 1.79% in second quarter. Did this come to you as a surprise? Uh, not at all. It didn't come to me as a surprise. Um, the trend is election year. You normally would have uh, this happen. So it didn't come to me as a surprise. It's, it's normal. Now, the agri uh, sector accounts for about 25% of the nation's GDP, yet it remains one of the most backward sectors. How would you reconcile this? Uh, well, um, <laughs> that's something that uh, many of us really don't understand. Uh, but I basically believe that uh, uh, it should not be so. We need to pay a lot of attention to the sector by bringing professionals to run the sector, uh, professionals with uh, private sector uh, experience. So we cannot uh, talk about um, diversifying the economy at the same time uh, bringing people who are not up to date with trends and happenings to run the sector. So I think we need to pay more attention and uh, reevaluate various in uh, interventions that uh, is being implemented right now. Now, the current administration, of course, has been doing quite a lot to support this sector. Why are we still having such declines? Yeah. What do you think is responsible? Well, what I know that is responsible is that government is funding more, um, creating the environment where agri can uh, flourish. However, uh, the focus on the small older farmers, which should be uh, the commitment from the small older farmers, um, is not there. So they get the uh, incentives and intervention, but they are not uh, committed and doing their part of, uh, of the deal. So it takes two to tango. Government is performing, the rural farmers are not performing. Uh, and this is real data uh, from various uh, aspects of the country. And what's your assessment of the agricultural policy of this government? How much impact have you seen? Well, we've not seen so much impact. Um, in terms of the, the policy, yes, it's a welcome development. The policies are good. Um, the CBN, like I always say, the CBN is more proactive than the Ministry of Agriculture now. Um, however, I, I'm seeing for the first time in maybe 15 years, uh, we used to complain about uh, customs at the borders. I operate uh, from two borders, the Shaki border and the Otter border, and I can tell you now that it's very difficult to bring in tomatoes like it used to come from Ghana, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, and Mali into the country. Right now, it's very difficult. Even as a farmer producing tomatoes in especially the Otter, uh, Idiroko Axis, we now have to form a cooperative to issue receipts to bring in tomatoes. So, yes, it's slow, but I believe that um, it's getting better. Now, this year's World Economic Forum on Africa, of course, it's ending today in Cape Town, South Africa. It has as its theme shaping a global 
architecture in the age of fourth industrial revolution. Now the whole world seemed to be talking about industrial revolution. Where does agriculture come in here and how can Nigeria leverage on technology to grow its agri sector? Yes, um, we, we have to leverage on technology. However, we need to pay attention that we don't have the apparatus and the infrastructure. So whatever technology is happening in developed countries needs to be adapted here. So I, I don't subscribe to all of us talking about drones and co. We may not be able to effectively embrace drones because of the security challenges we have. So we need to take it a step further to say that, okay, why don't we start with mechanization? A mechanization that works for Africa, not mechanization that is being imported and you know, brought in hook, line, and sinker. So we need to begin to talk about two-wheel tractors, something that the average uh, farmer can use. And we need to refocus in getting the youths involved, especially the graduates uh, of agriculture and young graduates who are interested in it. I'm not seeing a lot of drive into that age gap uh, of fresh graduates. Meanwhile, they are the ones that are already geared, uh, prepared, and should take over. So we need to focus a bit more on the youth, and we need to bring up technology and not try uh, to meet up with the developed countries. Mind you, the developed countries are also now trying to do what we're doing. So they find out that uh, the commercial, uh, all those large mega scale projects, it's affecting the environment. So they're embracing what Africa is, is trying to lose. You know, they are trying to gain it. So we need to work with our comparative advantage and know that, in quote, our, our backwardness or lack of development can be leveraged as an opportunity. Um, organic and close to nature foods is in high demand. And so we need to work with what we have to give the world what we have as against trying to bring everything from outside the country and dump in here. Now, talking about uh, mechanization, what, in your view, are the major impediments to agricultural mechanization in Nigeria? One, um, we need more interventions in the mechanize, mechanization of agri-value uh, agri chain, especially land. So, yes, there's this uh, conversation around food is wasting, uh, farm produce, rather, is wasting. However, we're not producing the right uh, uh, quality. Take, for instance, in India, where I did some study this year, there's a, a federal government uh, incentive around ensuring that the small and medium-scale farmers embrace irrigation. So, depending on your scale, you get 70%, 60%, um, intervention from government. And so in the area of Anan and Gujarat in, in India, you have having that happen. And they have uh, small older farmers, more small older farmers there. So we need to look into producing the right crops, the right livestock, that value can be added, that can be exported. So in terms of mechanization, we need to open uh, more lands. We need to bring in technology in terms of soil tests, in, time, in terms of soil laboratories, technology is really needed there. If we are able to solve that and also use technology to drive uh, education in, in the colleges of agriculture, in the universities of agriculture, the private sector will take it from there. So that production aspect, you're hearing that uh, there are companies, they don't have, uh, they are finding it difficult to get inputs. It's because planting is still done manually. And uh, the technology that is brought is for commercial rather than bringing something small. So you have it in Asia that they focus more on small and medium. You know, so we need to focus on the small and medium, create jobs there, and uh, scale it. Now, there are um, so, uh, many, uh, so many research institutes on agriculture. How much impact would you say they are making on agriculture? Well, I, I believe that government should um, focus on commercializing a lot of research. 
that is gathering dust in all these institutes. I've been to a number of them, and I can tell you that um, they have a lot of things working for them. They need more funding, and they need no, more monitoring. Yes, you put in more funds, and you monitor them, and you set targets for them. So uh, a few years ago, about 12 years ago, I went to a, uh, a West African country and just to discover a type of maize that will reduce feeding by two weeks for livestock. And I came back here, and my colleagues that we were in uh, school together, my contemporaries, I was excited showing them the seed, and they took me to the seed bank, and it had been lying fallow there. So we need to commercialize what we have uh, and say to those research institutes, you will be retrenched if you don't perform. So we need uh, the Com Ministry for Trade to go in there, work with them, and commercialize these things. We need to embrace the media to say this is available and this solves those problems. And that way we get a lot of jobs and the, 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 uh, the research institutes can work. I can tell you we have one of the best um, research institutes in, in, in Nigeria. We have researchers in Nigeria. They all go all over the world. They call them to do projects. But here we don't value them. So we need to bring back that uh, self-esteem back there. Many of them um, don't like their jobs anymore. Many of them. So we need to bring in there, fund them, um, expand, expand um, them in terms of um, facilities, and, and I'm sure we can do it. We're Nigerians first, you know, and, and it starts with the brain, and we have what it takes. We really don't need so much foreign things to get it done. Okay. Now, in most advanced e economies, there are subsidies for agriculture. Are you satisfied with the level of subsidy support for agriculture in Nigeria? Well, it has improved uh, uh, beyond what it used to be. Uh, but we need to evaluate what we have. Like, Anchor Borrowers Program is a well thought through program. And I always say that. And I give that to Central Bank. However, um, after like four years now, we need to be saying that this intervention, after a long time, has been reaching rural farmers and whoever wants to play in that sector. However, what we call an anchor is still dependent on the banks. And so we need to have small anchors who may not have those big fundings. This is an intervention fund. And so let's say it's a hundred billion to that uh, intervention we can say, let's put one billion in the hands of cooperatives to access it and they be able um, to implement amongst themselves. So we need to reevaluate uh, this intervention, but I think it's better. However, in developed economies, like you said, they've moved more from uh, subsidizing inputs to subsidizing outputs. So when you subsidize inputs, what you find out is that there can be a lot of sharp practices. The farmers are selling most of the in seeds and inputs that government is giving them. But if you subsidize output, it aids value addition, which is the next phase. So government intervention needs to focus a lot more into the value addition. And you'll find out that the farmers will take care of themselves and it will be market driven. All right. Thank you for your time, uh, Mr. African Farmer uh, Mortgage. Let's just hope uh, that um, the government and, of course, um, private sector eventually get it right in this um, sector. Thank you for your time.